Hello, growers. I'm Dr. MJ Coco from CocoForCannabis.com. I conduct independent grow light tests as part of our comprehensive grow light guide. Today I've got the Magobi Octopus 300. It's a quantum board style light designed for 3x3 grow spaces. It has a unique design with corner plates that extend away from the center. It seems like a gimmick, but I was impressed with the performance in my PAR and EPAR tests. The price is incredibly good. We have a 10% Amazon discount code. Coco Light, which gives it one of the best cost efficiencies I've measured among all lights, and certainly the best among smaller lights. If you're watching during the live premiere, you have a chance to win this one for free. I'm doing a PAR test premiere giveaway. Guess the three digit winning number and put it in the chat. If you missed the premiere, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next one. The Magobi Octopus 300 arrived in a plain square box. Let's see. Hmm some hanging hooks that improve their hanging kit, and the manual card. I'll remove the protective cover, and there it is. We have the rest of the hanging kit. Ratchet pulleys, wire hangers, a few zip ties, and an RJ cable. The power cord is already attached. Let me lift it up, and I'll take off the protection. It's certainly an interesting fixture. You can see how the corner plates can slide away from the center on these two bars. There are set screws to lock them into any position. Whoop. I guess that one wasn't locked in. They seem to slide easily. It seems nicer in person than it looked in pictures. You may not be familiar with Magobi, but I have confidence in their products. I've recommended their trim trays for a year. They're all stainless steel and feature removable replaceable screens. Many members in our community have one and the reviews are great. This footage is from my Gromy Berkshire bud. You should check out his YouTube channel. I've also tested and will publish a review on the new Magobi Dab Press. But the Octopus 300 is the first light that I've tested from Magobi. The design is certainly distinctive. There are grow lights that fold, those that disassemble, and now there's one that stretches out. Spreading more light to the corners makes sense, but the need to retract the corner plates is really limited to storage and shipping. Just as foldable lights should be unfolded before use, the corners on the Magobi Octopus 300 should be extended. When fully extended, the fixture is 62 by 62 centimeters, about 24 and a half inches square. The Magobi control box with dimmer knob is on the top of the fixture, together with the high efficiency mean well driver. The components and build quality both earn high scores. It comes with a hanging kit, but I use four ratchet pulleys for my PAR tests. There are rings to attach the clips at the corners of the center square. All right, let's get this octopus hanging. It's easiest to extend the corners after it's already hanging up. I'll pull them all out and set the screws. Looking down on it like this, you can see the point. It certainly is going to get more light into the corners, and it should create a more even distribution than a single solid board. I plugged it in, and I'll fire up the diodes. Magobi uses Letistar diodes. They're less well known, but make quality diodes that test comparably to the top end Samsungs. The center square quantum board is a 100 watt panel with 352 diodes. Each of the corners are 50 watt panels with 176 diodes. There are a total of 1,056 diodes, which is 3.52 diodes per watt. They include 3,000K and 5,000K full spectrum diodes, along with 660 nanometer deep red diodes. Magobi sells through Amazon, and we have a 10% discount code. Use code COCOLITE during checkout on Amazon. But I can't record Amazon pages, so let's move right into testing this light. I let the diodes warm up for over half an hour. I centered and leveled the fixture, and adjusted the height so that the maximum PPFD is 1,000 micromoles per square meter. It's 41.5 centimeters, about 16.5 inches above the sensor. I always set up our official tests with a maximum PPFD of 1,000. This allows easy comparison of the performance of different fixtures. I use the Apogee SQ500 quantum sensor for PPFD. It measures the PAR light from 400 to 700 nanometers. But after the PAR test, I leave the fixture in the same position and run an EPAR test with the Apogee SQ610 extended PAR sensor. This sensor measures a broader range of light from 400 to 750 nanometers. Recent research has shown that far red light from 700 to 750 nanometers contributes equally to photosynthesis. Some lights have dedicated far red diodes, but most full spectrum diodes 
also put out a portion of their energy in the far red range. The EPAR test is a better measure of the growth potential from a light, but let's check out the PAR map first. This is a great 3x3 three three PAR map. We want to see corners at least 500, and the Magobi Octopus 300 brings them all up over 600. There's an even distribution of light and great density everywhere. Let's switch to the EPAR map. The values in this map all tick up by about 30 to 40 points. That's because we're measuring a larger range of light, up to 750 nanometers, rather than 700. The Mangobi Octopus 300 does not have any diodes specifically for far red, but far red still accounts for almost 4% of the total light output. Let's run the numbers. In both tests, the fixture was at 41.5 centimeters, about 16.5 inches above the sensors. In the PAR range, the maximum PPFD was exactly 1,000 micromoles per square meter. In the EPAR range, the maximum density was 1,030 micromoles per square meter. The average PPFD was 770.5 micromoles per square meter in the PAR range, and the average goes up to 801.4 micromoles per square meter in the EPAR range. Those averages convert to a usable PPF of 624.1 micromoles and a usable ePPF of 649.1 micromoles. In both tests, the power draw was 295 watts, so the usable PAR photon efficiency is 2.12, and the usable EPAR photon efficiency is 2.20 micromoles per watt. The performance of the Magobi Octopus 300 is excellent across all three dimensions. The usable PPF, or amount of light, the distribution, how that light is spread across the canopy, and the photon efficiency, how much power you need to get the light. After the EPAR test, I measured the operating temperature. The ambient temperature during my tests was 24 degrees Celsius, 73.4 degrees Fahrenheit. The meanwhile driver had a maximum surface temperature of 61.7 degrees Celsius, 143.1 Fahrenheit. The heat sink on the center square LED panel had a maximum temperature of 54 degrees Celsius, 129.2 Fahrenheit. The satellite LED panels ran cooler at 45.4 degrees Celsius, 113.7 Fahrenheit. I also ran a dimming test, which I'll show you in a second. I publish all of these data for every fixture that I test as part of the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Guide. Here are the main data from the EPAR test and our estimates for coverage area and harvest potential. Here you can find our discount code and shopping link. Use code COCOLIGHT during checkout on Amazon. It saves 10%, which brings the cost right now down to only $215. That gives the Magobi Octopus 300 a cost efficiency of only 33 cents per micromole. It's a crazy good price. I've only tested one light with a better cost efficiency, and it was the giant Medicro EZ8, which pulls almost 1,000 watts. 33 cents per micromole is unheard of for smaller fixtures. So 33 is going to be our winning number in the PAR test premiere giveaway. Congrats to whoever guessed the closest number. And if you missed the premiere, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next one. Below the test data in the Grow Space Calculator, you'll find my written review. I agree that the Magobi Octopus 300 looks like a gimmick with its extending arms, but it's well made and the design actually seems to work. Compared to other quantum board style fixtures, it gets much better distribution out to the corners. The performance is very strong and the components and build quality are excellent. At only 33 cents per micromole, this light deserves attention. I ran a dimming test with both the PAR and the EPAR sensors. Most of the guidelines for density at different stages discuss the PPFD, which is the density within the PAR range. The Magobi Octopus 300 has a continuously adjustable dimmer, and as you can see, it's quite accurate. I was pretty skeptical about this light when I saw pictures of it, but seeing it in person makes a different impression. Magobi makes good products, and the performance of the Octopus 300 exceeded my expectations. The price is unbelievable. If you're looking for a 3x3 light, I think it'll be tough to find a better deal. At Cocoa for Cannabis, we always put the growers' interests first. Our goal is to provide impartial, science-based testing and reviews for home growers. 
You support our work when you use our codes to purchase grow lights. I'd like to thank Gary at Magobi for sending me the Octopus 300 to test. And thank you for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Turn on your notifications so you don't miss the next Par Test Premiere giveaway. Learn about all our grow light giveaways on the Deals and Discounts page at CocoForCannabis.com. While you're there, you can read our articles, chat with our community in the chat room, join the next Grow Challenge, and try your hand at the Grow Light Calculator. Grow your own, but don't grow alone. Let's grow together. I'm Dr. MJ Coco, sending all of you grower love.